Slice of Life is without a doubt my favourite genre of anime, but that's for the opposite reason of what most seem to think. See, if I asked a hundred people to tell me what Slice of Life is all about, a very specific kind of picture would form in the majority of people's heads. And that there? Now, I can kind of understand why, but it's the biggest misconception of the genre. In terms of the anime medium, Slice of Life is incredibly far-reaching. Really, all it describes is the spotlighting of the lives of characters, which can be done and has been done in so many different and refreshing ways. So yeah, Slice of Life can be things like K-On and non non Buri, but that's just a slice of what Slice of Life has to offer. But, before I go on to explain that, I think it's important to understand why these shows I've just mentioned are just as valuable as anything else I'm going to go on to talk about. Take K-On! for example, an anime that appears to many who haven't watched it as simply a fluff show, where not a whole lot happens and all it really seems to be is a time sink. <laughs> But for me, and for many, k is a much more colourful and eventful experience than that. There's no denying that k and shows like it do contain a substantial amount of cutesy moments that don't serve much wider purpose. Well, besides establishing important character dynamics and reflecting moments which many seem to look over, but that's not their entire focus. k on non non and others are set up in a way that creates a lens for which the viewer can be exposed to everything that's great, about young passion and friendship. Yamada in particular is a great director for evoking this heartwarming experience. So my point is, even these shows that seem to have given Slice of Life a certain image amongst anime fans aren't actually praised so highly for the reasons you might think if you're new to anime or just slightly misinformed. But even if this kind of slice of life doesn't sound like your cup of tea, which is the case for many, the genre definitely doesn't end here, which is a misconception that drives so many people away from some amazing works in the medium. What might surprise you is that what I've just described is not the type of slice of life I most enjoy. For me, a great slice of life is one that tells a very personal story, highlighting a character's hardships as well as their triumphs. There are many anime that choose to do this in the genre, from movies like like Hasoda's Wolf Children to personal favourite shows of mine like Clan Ad After Story. These are anime that have an instinctive sense of relatability in them, even if not directly on the surface. There's something fulfilling about watching characters progress through a journey that has both ups and downs, happiness, and sadness, and results in characters coming out changed in a certain way. In some rare cases, these shows have helped shape me as a person as a result of being highly reflective. I love these types of slice of life anime because they're anything but shallow, and achieve an experience which I think is very medium specific. There aren't many things outside of anime like Hanasaka Iroha, for example. A blissful experience that highlights the deeper importance of family relationships and what that really means. Hanasaki Iroha presents the growth of characters as a result of the bonds they form. These shows are fantastic to watch, but much like my first few examples, they are not the answer for what really defines a slice of life anime. Because it is yet another misconception that slice of life shows have to be grounded and realistic, whether that be in terms of setting or the core narrative. Really, that isn't true, Nagino Asakura being probably the best example. It's a show that presents an incredibly surreal and stunning fantasy world, while also presenting amazing character dynamics between its cast, and even on a deeper level, exposes the flaws of human nature, most notably the desire for segregation. Nagino Asakura shows that the slice of life genre is not bound by having to be set in a world that's familiar or relatable to us. What matters is that the presentation of characters is. Kokoro Connect is another example of a surreal slice of life, not in terms of setting, but the way it develops the relationships of its characters. So yeah, the slice of life genre can take place in interesting worlds and utilise unique ways of telling a story, but even that doesn't sum it up. A slice of life can be framed as a gag comedy, or even something which doesn't have any sort of extra value besides what you see is what you get the very thing it's most perceived as. <laughs> so 
So that really is the grand misconception. Slice of life is not one narrow thing. It's actually the single most diverse type of story in the medium that can be showcased in a variety of different ways. I've given over four different examples, and even that doesn't cover the sheer amount of different but equally meaningful experiences that can be taken away from slice of life shows. It's not like there aren't going to be slice of life anime you won't enjoy, but I do believe there's something for everyone. So, next time you see someone say slice of life is getting dull and repetitive, or it's all the same thing, look around, because you really know that isn't the case. Which, taking it back to the very first line of this video, is why Slice of Life is, without a doubt, my favourite genre. Thank you for watching, I've been Russ, and have a great night, or day.